Hello, this is Steve with another Cambridge English YouTube video. This one, a lesson I was doing this week with various classes, we're going to talk about uh, living in a small space in a micro apartment like Usui, who I've been watching on YouTube, and do a bit of grammar, a bit of writing, a very useful technique here for writing, and some speaking to finish. So what should you do to start? Uh, you should watch the video. You should go and watch one of Usui's videos, which I've linked here, which I watched in class, and I'll put in the description. And you could consider some typical speaking questions that you might be asked in an exam or if the topic was living spaces about the kitchen or kitchenette, about having a shower or a bath and different ways of doing that and routines, about how important it is to place your furniture in your house and about whether you might live in this kind of place and under what circumstances. So do that for your little starter. And then we have got some use of English part three and part two. I did them out of order because it sort of fits better with the, the texts. The text is from an article I found somewhere about micro apartments. So as always, pause the video, pause the video and do all of them. Part three, eight questions, transform the word, and then part two, eight questions, put the blank in. B2, C1, difficult B2, easy C1, about that level. So I think it works for whatever exam you're studying. Then I will share the answers with you. Hopefully you have um, either got them right or you have learned something which you can add to your notes. And obviously the first one is popularity and popularity of something increased because the population, which was not the answer, was growing rapidly. They're a solution to the population density, dense density, and they are affordable, meaning you can afford them. They are cheap, inexpensive. They typically range from 50 to 300 square feet, which is very, very small, isn't it? It's smaller than the room I'm in now, my baby's room. And they are creatively designed to include everything you need, such as bathrooms. Little trick there had to be plural, didn't it? Because it says kitchens, it doesn't say a communal, so it had to be plural. And then we want to maximize the limited space. That is one I have seen on C1 exams before. And as you can see, it came up in this real normal text. This is just a normal text I found, and well, that's the kind of language you'll need to use. For part two, this company has built many apartments in recent years. That was the clue there. If it's recent, talking about recently, in recent years, present perfect. The units, which measure a mere 95 square feet, must be which because it's a non-defining relative clause. We are adding extra information, so we can only say which, we can't say that. It's got commas, it's a non-defining relative clause, that's how you remember. Equipped goes with with, equipped with. Number 12 is surprisingly difficult, I think, because it's just not the most common structure, but their size is half that of a typical studio. The size is half of a studio, but half that, as in, that is the size, half of that, of a typical studio, and then more than. Hmm, there's going to be some easy ones in there that you can easily get right. The popularity can be attributed, passive structure, obviously with can, a modal verb, then the infinitive. Transit rich districts, like. We're giving examples of districts, we need to say like. And finally, you can live here without breaking the bank. It's not too expensive. You live there without breaking the bank. That was a nice one. So there's your part three and part two questions. Let's move on to some writing. Now we're focusing on advantages and disadvantages, a very useful type of writing that you might have in different questions, super common in a B2 or C1 essay that you will have to describe, explain, justify, elaborate the advantages of some activity, healthy living, the disadvantages of having a car in the city. Well, I'm going to try and think about how we make you know, impressive B2C1 sentences on this function, how you can complete this function. So start by thinking of some advantages and disadvantages of living in a micro apartment. This is your brainstorming part, try and think of maybe three each, and then use the best ones, the ones that you are, think are most interesting, relevant, complete, and so on. Here's some that I came up with, there's plenty, but we can see, for example, lower rent, cozy space, easy to clean, location, and so on. No space, no privacy, no guests, no hobbies, no pets, and so on. And I'm giving you some phrases for advantages and disadvantages. So a clear advantage is P 
paying lower rent. It's going to be ing, isn't it? Because that verb is the like the object of the sentence. A clear advantage is paying lower rent. A significant benefit is the same thing. Positive aspect, highlight, taken into account. On the other hand, drawback, disadvantage, a challenge. All of these useful phrases for advantages and disadvantages. So all you need to do now is take your ideas, plug them in to some of the phrases, get an introduction and conclusion, and you've got a lovely essay, which would look something like this. With an introduction, micro apartments are becoming increasingly popular in big cities like Tokyo, where there is high demand for a place to live. And this type of life has clear pros and cons. It's a nice introduction. Why is it good? Because it introduces the topic, micro apartments, but also says mm, like the function of my writing. I am not describing micro apartments. I'm not trying to sell a micro apartment. That would be a different type of writing. I'm writing about the advantages and disadvantages. So I'm going to say that in the introduction, pros and cons. Then I write my two, three paragraphs, however you want to organize it. And then in conclusion, living in a micro apartment is an interesting choice for people who want to live in the city center. Clear, pretty neutral, non-committal answer. If you want to do it, it's a good idea, obviously. But, you know, that's the, a fair conclusion. Your turn. Write it. Pause the video here and write an essay. Write the introduction, like I said. Write the conclusion, like I said. And use these expressions to write your two paragraphs. I think two paragraphs is fine. One paragraph for advantages, one paragraph for disadvantages. Using these expressions, picking out two or three of these ideas, linking it together with some expressions like however on the other hand and so on and really you've got no excuse not to write a perfect essay and we've done all the work here all you need to do is put the pieces of lego together until you've got a perfect essay which you can then send to me by gmail and for a small fee i will correct it for you or you can give it to your teacher or you can just put it on your wall whatever you want but the the the, the value is in doing it so do it do your homework there's your writing and we'll finish with some speaking let's finish on a fun note we have got some photos of different types of apartments and what i'd like you to do is for b2 compare the photos and say why people might want to live here and for c1 we could add another photo and we could say uh, compare the photos say why people might want to live here and what their typical daily routine might be yeah you know that i just made that up that might be a bit difficult to answer in one minute but you can try the main thing is talking about photos answering the question coming up with ideas sort of like what we did in the essay advantages basically this is going to be advantages and then putting it into a one minute little uh, mini essay okay that's everything for today there's one little lesson i was doing this week Hopefully there's some useful stuff in there. Do your writing. That's the important thing here. That's, that's what we can practice the most. And I'll see you next week. Goodbye.